Hello and welcome to UiPath Studio X, the tool for building your own automations without prior programming experience required. Today, I'm going to show you how you can build your first task automation. Let's start by having a quick look around. The Tools tab here is the place to go to install extensions that enhance UiPath's automation capabilities for different applications and web pages. Make sure to install the extension for the browser of your choice. The Excel add-on is very useful when you work with spreadsheets. It allows you to indicate ranges and cells directly in Excel. To install the extensions you need, just click them. Now let's go back to the Start tab. From here, you can browse for existing projects stored on your machine and even open the most recent ones with a simple click. This is also the place from where you start a new automation, either as a blank task or using these templates that capture some of the most common scenarios that you may encounter. In our case today, the blank project is enough. So let's click it, give it a name and hit Create. Once it finishes creating, we can see the automation design view. This is the automation canvas. Building automations is done by adding activities in the main panel. Think of activities as building blocks for your automation, replicating manual tasks that you would normally do on your computer, like clicking, typing, or creating a folder. We can add activities by dragging them into the designer or by clicking the plus button in the designer and searching for them. When you use the search function, you'll see common scenarios besides the regular activities. These are pre-built pieces of automation meant to help you save time. All right, today we're gonna to build a simple automation that takes a name from a list in an Excel file and enters it into a website to get the corresponding unicorn name. Then it takes the unicorn name and puts it in the same Excel file right next to the real name. And because we have two rows in the Excel file, it means that we need to repeat the steps two times. All right, since we'll be using Chrome from the beginning, we need to make it clear in the automation. Let's add a Use Application or Browser. Notice that this is in the Resources category because it's not quite an activity in the sense of it being a task that a user would do. Instead, it provides a scope for one or several actions, as you'll see right away. Once added, click Indicate Application and choose Chrome. And because the Chrome extension has been installed, it's able to read information out of the browser, including the URL that we're working with. Besides Chrome, we're also using Excel. And there's a resource allowing me to work with Excel files, similarly to the one used for Chrome. This one is called Use Excel File. Now remember that we were saying that we need to repeat the same set of actions for each of the items in the Excel file. If we click the plus sign here, we can take a look under common scenarios, where we have this, repeat actions for rows. If we click it, we get this Excel for each row activity, which does exactly this. It's going to ask in what range. Because I have the Excel extension installed, it's able to read the content of the file without opening it. So I can choose sheet one. Let's also check has headers, meaning that the first row in the range is the name of the column and has no data to iterate through. Next, let's enter the name into the text box on the web page. We'll use a type into activity, just like human users would do. We'll click indicate target. Notice that as I hover over various elements on the web page, it's highlighting them in green. These are all elements identified successfully that I can work with. I want to type the information into the enter your name text box. It's highlighted in green the text box in which the name goes, but it's also identified an anchor, the label that's associated with it. The use of anchors makes the identification process more reliable, and this is a good anchor, so we can confirm it. We've indicated where we want to type. Now let's fill in the type this by clicking the plus icon here. It's going to offer us several options, including the current row in our Excel file. The name is what we need, so let's choose it. So now we're typing the value from the cell into that website. We'll now need to do a click to submit it. Click is also the name of the action that we'll use. And we'll indicate the target. That looks good. The final thing that we need to do after clicking the button is reading the value the generated unicorn name and saving it back into our Excel file. 
we'll do this with a get text action. It's going to ask us to indicate on screen the value that we want to copy. The target is the right one, but it wasn't able to identify an anchor. So it's asking us to do it. We need something reliable like the your unicorn name label here above. This won't change, so we can click confirm. Then it's going to ask us where to save the text. Let's save this back into the current row in the spreadsheet, more specifically into the unicorn name column. Studio X minimizes the application and starts running. It types the name here, clicks the button, and a new unicorn name is generated. It does it twice and the automation is now finished. When we go back to Studio X, we can see here that the last run was successful. Let's also check the Excel file. Both unicorn names have been written here. And that's how easy it is to automate a task with UiPath Studio X. If you're interested in learning more, you can go back to the home screen and then to the Help tab. There are links to many other resources, including product documentation, with lots of step-by-step -step tutorials, and UiPath Academy with free courses, including one on Studio X. Thanks for watching.